Welcome back to the Baseball Hood 2, where we talk about Major League Baseball rumors, different items in the news regarding the teams, or any kind of player. And hopefully you like this stuff, and of course subscribe to this channel. So we'd like to talk about rumors. And the biggest player on, on the planet, on planet Earth, Shohei Otani. Uh, there's a bit of an article out there talking about what's going on with him. And before we get into that, I hope that you subscribe to the Baseball Hut 2 and like this video and leave comments. So as you know, Shohei Otani is going to be, probably in all likelihood, he's going to be a free agent at the end of this season. This season is now a third of the way through. We're at the Memorial Day uh, barrier, and the next big date will be the 4th of July, and then after that it will be the All-Star break, and then of course uh, August 1st which will be the trade deadline this year. Now, Shohei Otani, I do not believe he will be traded. But there are teams that are going to be lining up for him come the offseason. And one of the teams, as you know, is the New York Mets. Another team is the Dodgers, the Cubs, possibly the Rangers, and and maybe a dark horse or two, maybe the Mariners. You never know. As Shohei Otani prepares to become the f biggest and the Hut means biggest free agent that professional baseball have, has ever seen. The short list of teams vying for the Los Angeles Angels superstar signature may, may be smaller than most think. And the franchise that is most is perhaps best situated to get Otani is just an hour's drive away from Anaheim, California and Angel Stadium in the Los Angeles Dodgers. According to ESPN's Busta Only. Only spoke of executives around MLB, and some of them believe that the fit would be a perfect match for both the part, both parties involved. Quote: It makes too much sense for them, the executive said. It's a market that responds to stars, and he's the biggest star in the game. End quote. Only listed the Dodgers the favorite to land him, who may be looking at a potential five hundred million dollar contract. With whoever team, whatever team he decides to land with. And even as the organization with the fifth highest payroll in the league, according to Spot Rack, Los Angeles has been, and it has been doing its due diligence in making room for Otani's potential arrival. LA cut about 15% of its payroll this past offseason, according to Only, which is accomplished by signing more low key free agents and giving them short term deals like JD Martinez. But the Dodgers aren't the only West Coast power who have high hopes of getting Otani in their threads. The pathetic San Diego Padres, who are never shy about throwing money, throwing around the cash, also friendly in the running up to this point. Now, the thing about the Padres, folks, is how much money have they spent, and they just can't get out of their own way. This is crazy. They spent all this money out there in San Diego, and they can't seem to get out of their own way. They got Juan Soto, and Juan Soto looks like he's, he's a show himself from when he got traded to the Nationals to the San Diego Padres. So we'll see. Next up, the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, the Mets will be playing the Phillies this week at City Field for the first time this year. And the Phillies are three games under 500, or two games under 500. They're not doing so hot. They're not doing too good. Uh, they got, just about a month ago, they got back Bryce Harper back early from his Tommy John surgery uh, that he got in the offseason. Uh, offensively, they're not, nothing spectacular. Uh, obviously, they don't have Bryce Hoskins. Hopkins, Hoskins, it doesn't matter what you call him. He hurt his knee in spring training. And their offense has been okay. Nothing special like the Mets, really, for the first uh, few weeks of the season. Uh, but their pitching has not been great. But uh, they are getting calls. They're getting calls, believe it or not. People are calling the Phillies uh, for starting pitchers. The Phillies are reportedly getting plenty of calls on the trade market about their starting pitchers, particularly their starters. Well, it's funny you say this article. It's so stupid, this article. The reports on what they've been involved in indicate that the August 1st trade deadline is going to be very good for any team that has a starter available for trade. Dave Dombrowski talked about the state of the Phillies starting pitching, but first point out that looking for rotation fortification is not just a Philly problem. It's a Mets problem, too. It's nearly a league-wide problem. 
It makes me wonder that this pitch clock situation is burning these, these pitching rotations. You know, these guys were taught through their whole careers to, to pitch at a certain uh, uh, speed. And it makes me wonder if they're burning out these, these uh, rotations. Even the Phillies are getting calls and quiet. That's my own edification. Even the Phillies are getting calls and quiet about the starting pitch they have available. That's curious because the Phillies are bouncing their own act, but teams may just be getting a lay of the land. After all, plenty could change by August. And if the Phillies trouble, tumble, tumble in a tough division and become sellers, they could trade someone like Aaron Nola. He has an expiring contract. I don't see that. I don't see the Phillies um, selling at all. Because with the extra wild card, you have a shot. And because of the extra wild card, the Phillies know they got the extra wild card last year and were able to get to the World Series. All you got to do is make some moves that can just get you in, make moves that you know are going to help you win the world, get to the World Series, and you got a shot. Last year, they played very poorly against the New York Mets and against the Atlanta Braves, but they made moves for the trading deadline. And Dave Dombrowski is a great general manager. So he knows how to uh, bring in talent. And because of that, he was able to make some moves. He brought in some bullpen help, and they were able to get to the World Series. Unfortunately, they did not win the World Series, but they got there. And that's all you need is a chance to get there. And I do not see under any circumstances the Phillies uh, selling off at all, unless they totally collapse, which I don't see happening. Um, they are right there with the Mets and with the Phil and with the with the Braves in terms of postseason play. I've been saying this for, for a while now. They're all kind of they're all together, and they're not going to be too far out front, or too far behind. They're all kind of attached at the hip to a certain degree. That they're, they're the class of this division, even though they they go through I mean, all three teams. They all do this. They all go through these, through these bad stretches. And they've shown this for the last three years. The, the Mets, Phillies, and the Braves have done that. Only thing that was different about last year is the teams won over 100 games. The Mets and the and the uh, uh, the, the Braves won over 100 games. The Phillies did not do that. The Phillies have been hanging around the same number of, of games for the last three years. But we'll see what happens with the Phillies. But I highly doubt they'll be making any kind of moves to trade anybody. In fact, I'll give you a suggestion of a player. That I could see definitely coming to the to the Phillies. And that's Christian Walker, the first baseman for the Diamondbacks. Keep an eye on him. He's a guy I could see getting moved and getting moved to the Phillies. And finally in this video, Marcus Stroman and the Cubs. Uh, Marcus Stroman has pitched actually pretty well in his last few starts. He pitched well against the Mets. On Sunday, he pitched a one-hitter. I only gave up one walk, struck out eight, nine innings. The second time in his career. He's pitched a complete game. Now, there's talk that the Cubs are thinking about giving him an extension because he's got an opt-out after this year. So he is a guy that could be available on the trade market. There are teams that are looking for pitching, as I said in this video, one of which is the New York Mets, the Philadelphia Phillies, and a few other teams could be very interested in a starter that could help them uh, down the stretch. Uh, there is some drama there. With this player, there is a lot of drama that surrounds Marcus Stroman. However, he is a guy that you know will be a big game pitcher. You put him in a big spot, he will pitch well. I really believe that. I mean, that's the one thing about Marcus is he will give you everything he's got on the mound. He'll give you headaches in the clubhouse. But in terms of as a, as a performer, he is very good. So, you know, I mean... But he, he is a guy that could pitch really well for your team. It's, do you want the sort of drama that you're going to get from him, the sort of tension that he brings into a clubhouse and with the media? That's, that's really, is it worth it? Well, it could be worth it if, you, if your team has not been to the World Series in a long time or they've not been postseason in a long time. So that is a player I think could be moved come trading deadline because I don't, you know, the Cubs are in a weird spot. They're just not good enough, in my opinion. So, I just don't, I don't know. I mean, they're kind of in a weird spot. It's not a great division. The Cardinals are sort of up and down, mostly down. The, the Pirates were up and now they're down. The Brewers aren't good, that great. You know, it's a very strange division in, in the National League Central. But, 
You let me know what you think about this video as a whole. What do you think about Tani? What do you think about the Phillies? And, of course, Marcus Stroman and the Cubs. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe to the Baseball Hut 2. Thank you, and I'll see you later.